This is the Padua Podcast Network. Uh, she was called a chocoholic, and uh, she ate chocolate every day until her death. That sweet thing keeps coming up. <laughs> Wondering if I should start eating more chocolate. I don't know. Running Fever, episode 169, Living to 100, Sarah Naus. Hey, welcome to the show. My name is Michael Davis. Loving life and living long, that's my goal. Do you love your life enough to make it last as long as possible? Yeah, if you do, you're in the right place. And speaking of long life, we're in the middle of a series, or actually toward the end of a series, on super centenarians. And today, we're at number two, all the way to number two. I can't believe we got this far. Suspense is killing you, I know. Actually, there's no suspense because, well, I already told you who's on the list, but I haven't told you yet quite that much about them. And I got quite a bit today. As you get up higher in the list, there's more interest and more data available especially for these final two. Sarah now, the oldest American to ever live and oldest United States citizen to ever live. Canadians and Mexicans are also Americans. I was once told by a Canadian, so I sometimes qualify that. But she is the oldest American, at least North American. Actually, she's the oldest American because the only person to ever outlive her, only person to live longer, was French. Just passing the old stomping grounds now. It's a beautiful day out here. Relatively cool, especially compared with last week. Hey there. A number of people I've seen twice on the trail. So people are really getting out, thinking, making the most of today. Little diet report. Uh, not, not bad. Diet's doing okay. And sausage for breakfast. I had plenty of good 40 ounces of water before I came out here today. Hey. And I also had a pre workout shake. Since it is kind of early still, even though I had some coffee earlier. And protein shake as well. As I said, I'm trying to stick with the, a routine of supplementation. Four wheel. Four wheel pedal car trying to get up the hill. You know, lots of bicycles going around and runners. And, Pretty close to the old stomping grounds here. Always crowded near the parking lots, but there's, like I said, plenty of people that I'm meeting that have gone the whole distance. A nice fresh breeze now. A little bit of shade. So, fashion department, uh, yeah, I won't we'll finish the diet department in a minute, but uh, due to the temperature fashion department, I did put on, you know, I walked outside and it was kind of cool, so I decided to put the uh, compression pants on today. And that's how cool it feels with the, the wind we have going here. Diet department, uh, yeah, doing pretty good today. Uh, I'm sticking to that supplementation thing. I, it's very important to have routine, you know, and you think, well, you know, you're trying to lose weight. Can you just, like, not skip your cheat meal? Well, what I find is if I skip my cheat meal, then that's going to wind up, I'll wind up cheating later at some point. It may be even worse. So... Plus, that helps you with your uh, metabolism. Uh, so, for more information on that, see the episode entitled, Why You Need a Cheat Meal. Yeah, so I had uh, sausage, turkey sausage this morning. I found out, you know, my calculation for turkey sausage is off a bit, because there are three to a serving and not just two. So that makes it, uh, at 130 calories a serving, that makes it about 33 per link and I usually have four so it's a lot less than I thought it was and this morning I didn't have yesterday morning I had I ate out for breakfast so I had an omelet big calorie day but uh, today 
just sausage. And I say big calorie day yesterday, but I didn't. I actually had my supplements. I didn't really have a normal lunch. I think that's why I had my protein shake. So yeah, not sure what's going to happen today, but since I'm out here walking at lunchtime and did have my supplements, I don't know. It'd probably be mid-afternoon at the earliest. Going to meet somebody later for whatever, just to meet. So I don't know if we'll have food there or not, but should be good. Should be good. Uh, so this is the 10th episode in our series on super centenarians, the top 10 longest lived people of all time. I'm going to start calling it, I know it's late, but I'm going to start calling it living to 100 and beyond. He's going way too fast because those, uh, because these are all super centenarians, that is folks who live to be at least 110. Now, Sarah Naus was born all the way back in 1880, September 24th of that year. And she lived until the 30th of 19, the 30th of December, 1999. So she almost lived in three centuries. Although, again, <laughs> in a recent episode, I told you about the different uses of the word century. So uh, some people said that she would have to live till 2001. I don't know. Regardless, she didn't quite make it to the second millennium. She's number two. Oh, that, that's a total of 119 years. I mean, that beats... We've been going through a lot of... Most of the people on the list are 117 and some number of days. She's 119, so she's uh, beat people out. And that's why she's been on the list, probably, since 99 or earlier. She's number two on the list of all-time longest-lived people and did once hold the title of the oldest living person from April 16th of 98 to 1230, December 30th of 99, her death. She's the oldest person ever from the United States. Mrs. Naus was born in Hollywood, Pennsylvania and died in Allentown. Uh, her husband was named Abraham Lincoln Naus, and he was, not so ironically, a Republican politician. Their only child uh, lived to be 101. Uh, when she died, there were six generations, and I believe they were on the cover of Life magazine, which I will be unable to show you, but I can give you a link to it in the show notes, runningfever.com slash 169. When she died, so they were, they were on the cover of Life magazine that had all generations, all the six of the generations. And uh, so I'll check that out. Those six generations went from Sarah, who was already 119 at that time, to her four-year-old great-great-great-grandson. And she also, I mean, and this is, I don't know, pretty amazing, even though she only had one child, she also had a grandchild, a grandson, uh, three great-granddaughters, and five great-great-grandchildren. She worked uh, as an insurance office manager and homemaker. She never drove a car, even though they were fairly well off, so they were one of the first people to have a car in their town. She never drove. Of course, she was around when the Wright brothers flew that first powered airplane, and yet she never flew in an airplane her entire life. Uh, according to one article, she was a renowned storyteller. Obviously had some plenty of time to do uh, babysitting with the uh, grandchild, grandchild and great-grandchildren, etc. Uh, apparently she liked transportation because of these facts showed up. Uh, she claimed to have seen the last horse-drawn trolley in Allentown, where she lived most of her life, and uh, she moved there after she got married. That's one of those people who've been talking for over an hour on the phone, like me, talking to you. 
And she also claimed to see the last electric trolley and the last steam-driven locomotive that was in service there. Of course, we still have those. They're antiques, but they still exist. Maybe not in Allentown, though. Her grandson said that she was a very quiet woman. A lot of people said this. Uh, she enjoyed playing bridge with a group of Allentown women. During World War II, she rolled bandages for the wounded soldiers, doing her part. She was an accomplished seamstress who used a foot-powered sewing machine until 1940 when her family purchased an electric singer sewing machine for her. Made her own clothes and also hemmed clothes for her family. She also did a lot of needlework that apparently still survives in various family houses, homes. When it was announced to her that uh, she was the oldest living person, she said, so what? <laughs> apparently that was no big deal to her. She was a church member in Allentown and attended Bible study classes uh, at her nursing home, where she lived the last, uh, I guess, nine years of her life. And that brings us to our quality of life section that we've been doing on each of these. Because what's the purpose of studying all these supercentenarians? Well, you know, is it worth it? Do you really want to live this long? What was the quality of life in those extra years that these people lived? What was it like? What could they do? What could they not do? And also, how relevant is this to us? Can we really achieve this? Some people say yes. It's, uh, there's a lot to do. This Part of it is genetics. Part of it is where you live and what you do. And uh, the top 10 are all women. So that is one of those things you don't have control over. So quality of life in 1995, uh, Sarah said that she enjoyed life because she still had her health and could do things. She lived her last nine years in a nursing home and died peacefully in her sleep with no known illness. She was also almost completely deaf at that point. However, she was with family because her 96-year-old daughter, at the time of her death, also lived in the nursing home with her, the same nursing home. Uh, she did use a wheel, wheelchair at the end of her life. It was said that she always had a smile on her face. She had a positive attitude. Just kind of let things fly by. She sewed her last quilt in 1987 when she was 107, but was still hemming clothes for the family right up until her death. One of her weekly rituals was to go to the hairdresser, get her hair fixed. Uh, up until her death, and she wore her hair in a French twist. Not sure what that... Well, I can say that the pictures I've seen, she looked really nice. And there are plenty of pictures of her available. Hopefully, a free one that I can use for this episode. Uh, she had a relatively youthful appearance, and I can attest to that also. On her 119th birthday, she said she didn't make a wish when she blew out the candles. Apparently she did all the time she needed to get her wishes to come true. But, I mean, also that's a testament to her happiness. She didn't wish for death. And I just realized I did not put on sunscreen today, even though I did the last time it came out. Uh, when it's cooler, I tend to forget that those ultraviolet rays are always there, ready to play havoc on my skin, go to battle. So I gotta have my war paint on. Uh, she got out of bed every day and loved doing things, especially when there were children involved. On her 119th birthday, she got up at 6.30 a.m. and couldn't wait to get out of bed. That's where I want to be. Just ready to go. Diet. Well, we've seen all kinds of diets in this series. Uh, Japanese, I mean, like I said, they got it. They got it going on. They really have healthy diets. But 
a lot of these supercentenarians like sweets. Uh, she was called a chocoholic, and uh, she ate chocolate every day until her death. And uh, on her 119th birthday, she ate a crab patty, a butterscotch sundae, and chocolate turtles. And of course, birthday cake, which was chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. And being the second oldest person to ever live, of course she was asked the question about her secret. She said, keep busy, work hard, don't worry about how old you are. And she said she didn't let anything upset her. She'd been through a lot. Uh, several presidents were assassinated during her lifetime. Uh, seven wars. Um, so uh, she'd been through a lot and uh, she didn't let it bother her. And uh, that's another thing that's pretty common, you know, uh, stress. So what do we learn? You gotta take care of stress and uh, make sure you have, you know, a lot of people it's, it's uh, faith. Uh, exercise either because you're you know farming or you're active in sports and just a little teaser for the next episode uh, was a very privileged woman who was active in an unbelievable amount of sports hard to believe anyway maybe not unbelievable but difficult to believe so that's a big factor. Staying busy, working hard, basically staying active. We knew that already. A lot of things kind of reinforced, but that sweet thing keeps coming up. <laughs> Wondering if I should start eating more chocolate. I don't know. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that episode about the number two, the second oldest living person of all time, Sarah Naus. So if you're new to the show, great. If you like it, go ahead and catch the fever. If you got the fever, Go ahead and keep it. Stay with me. And we're going to get there. We're going to get to that long life. Happy, healthy, and active. Into our hundreds, hopefully. And I will catch you next time on Runny Fever.